Now, if you follow my channel, you know I'm a huge fan of the MateBook line from Huawei, starting with the original Huawei MateBook X to the MateBook X Pro from last year. I'm a big fan. So when Huawei announced the MateBook 13 at CES 2019, I was excited. Now, I got a chance to look at it, got some hands-on time with it at CES 2019 back in January, and I couldn't wait to really put it through the paces in a full review. Well, the good news is I took delivery of it about a week and a half ago, and I've been putting it through its paces ever since and I'm impressed. Hey everybody, it's Andrew. This is my unboxing and review of the Huawei MateBook 13 and its comparison to the 2018 MateBook X Pro. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Well, why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification icon. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And don't forget to check me out on my social media, especially Twitter, because that's where I post all the latest updates. Now, before we get to the unboxing, here's a quick rundown of the specs. What you're looking at is a 13-inch IPS multi-touch display. It's a sharp, beautiful display. We'll get to that in a little bit. It's powered by the Intel 8th generation processor. It's the Whiskey Lake processor. Comes in either Core i5 or the Core i7. You're looking at either 256 gigabytes or 512 gigabytes of NVMe PCIe SSD storage. Both SKUs come with 8GB of RAM, there is no 16GB option, and it has a 41.8 watt hour battery. We'll talk about the battery life in just a little bit. Pricing starts at $999 for the Core i5 model and $1299 for the Core i7 model, which also features an MX150 GPU. That's the one I went with. But enough with the specs, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now this comes in a pretty nondescript brown box, which is in direct contrast to the really premium packaging of the MateBook X Pro. I thought that was kind of interesting. Now I love the fact they give you the Huawei Mate Dock 2 at no additional cost. It gives you an additional USB-C port, a VGA port, and an HDMI port. And on the other side, you get a USB-A port. That's all good. You get your USB-C cable and of course the USB-C power adapter. It's a 65 watt charger. We'll talk about battery life in just a little bit. And you get some documentation and warranty information as well. Holding the unit for the first time, it's very premium, very high end, very reminiscent of course to the Huawei MateBook X Pro. It also has that space gray color that I absolutely love. And just like the MateBook X Pro, the build and construction is excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Video Converter by Wondershare, the ultimate conversion tool that is a must have for any content creator here on YouTube. Now, as you know, I produce a lot of videos here on my channel. And what you probably don't know is that I have to convert certain file formats in terms of video from one format to another. And that could be a big pain in you know what. And that's where Video Converter comes in. It's really easy. Let me show you. The first step is to pick the file you want to convert. I'm going to do an MOV, which was produced on my Mac, so I can play it on my iPhone. That's an MP4. So I'm going to go from an MOV to an MP4. Once you select it and hit convert, it does its magic. It's simple, fast, and very efficient. And once it's done, go to the converted tab, hit the file you want, and you're ready to go. It's that simple. And not only can you convert from MOV to MP4, you could do WebM to MP4, TS to MP4, MP4 to MPEG, AVI to MOV. I think you get the picture. It's available for both Windows and Mac, and it comes in at a great price. Head on over to videoconverter.wondershare.com for more information and where you could download it. Again, this is the must-have tool for video conversion. To get it in at a lesser price, there are some compromises. You're going to notice in the ports, there are only two USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 ports. There are no Thunderbolt 3 ports as you'd get with the Huawei MateBook X Pro. And you could also see the difference in size as well as color. As you can see, it's a little different shade of space gray. And there's a difference in display sizes. They're looking at a 13.9 inch in the MateBook X Pro, whereas the MateBook 13 has a 13 inch display, slightly lower resolution as well. And as you can see, the MateBook 13 has a smaller footprint than the MateBook X Pro. And you get quad stereo speakers on the MateBook X Pro. You get dual speakers on the bottom on the MateBook 13. Those are the key differences so far. 
Let's talk about that display because I think it's really good. Now what you're looking at is a 13 inch IPS LCD multi-touch display. It has a resolution of 2160 by 1440. That's 200 pixels per inch and it has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. And if you watch my channel, you know that's my favorite aspect ratio. A nice blend between getting work done as far as productivity is concerned and consuming media such as Netflix and YouTube. You're looking at some really deep black, some very vibrant colors, and it's a somewhat bright display, but not quite as bright as the Huawei MateBook X Pro. In fact, here's how it fared against its competition. As you can see, it was slightly above average, not quite as bright, of course, as the MateBook X Pro or the new Dell XPS 13 for 2019, which, by the way, I will be reviewing very soon. But it is bright enough for both indoor and outdoor use, except if you're going to use it in direct sunlight, you will have issues as it's also a glossy display as well. And here it is next to the Huawei MateBook X Pro. As you can see, the display on the MateBook X Pro is slightly bigger, has a sharper resolution, and it definitely gets brighter. But I have to say that the Huawei MateBook 13 and its display is no slouch in its own right. It did very well in all those categories. It's a very sharp display which covers the color gamut really well. At 122% sRGB, this may be a good choice for those creative professionals out there who use the display for videography and for photography. And just like the MateBook X Pro, this has some really slim bezels, but this takes it one step further. They were able to put a webcam on the display, unlike the MateBook X Pro, which gave you that chin cam by the keyboard. So this is the front-facing camera on the Huawei MateBook 13. It's good for Skype, good for video conferencing. It's not bad. The camera is a 720p, 30 frames per second in terms of video. It's good. I, I have no complaints. I mean, I've seen worse, that's for sure. Now, when it comes to performance, the MateBook 13 doesn't disappoint. In fact, it outperformed the MateBook X Pro in pretty much all the benchmarks. And that's because it's running the 8th generation Whiskey Lake processor as opposed to the slightly older KB Lake R you find on the MateBook X Pro. Now, having said that, even with 8 gigabytes of RAM, you're still getting better performance out of the the MateBook 13. That's impressive. Now I have the MateBook 13 Core i7 with the NVIDIA GeForce MX150 GPU, 2 gigabytes of video memory. This is the 25 watt variant. That's a slightly better performance than you'd get, say, from the MateBook X Pro, which had this slightly slower 10 watt variant of the MX150. Interesting results. Now don't think just because this has a dedicated GPU, the MX150 is not a high-end gaming graphics card. In fact, it's a slightly better than the built-in graphics you'd get with the HD graphics that Intel gives you. So having said that, you can play certain games, older titles on lower settings, but if you're expecting to play AAA titles on their highest settings, you're gonna be in for a big disappointment but you can edit 1080p videos with it without any issues, and you could also do productivity work, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, and of course, consuming media such as Netflix and YouTube. It handled everything like a champ. And I thought the thermals were actually pretty good as well. Under heavy load, it never got really hot or really uncomfortable. The hottest it got was on the bottom, and that never was really too uncomfortable as well. Good job on terms of the thermals. Okay, so let's talk about what's user upgradable, but something that's not user upgradable is the RAM, and you're only limited to eight gigabytes of RAM. As I stated, there is no 16 gigabyte option. Now you can get 16 gigabytes with the MateBook X Pro, that's not available here. Now the other thing that you can swap out here is the SSD, but I don't know why you would because I'm seeing some excellent reads and writes. In fact, much better than the one on the MateBook X Pro. Check it out. Now you also can change out the Wi-Fi card if you so choose, although I'm getting very good uploads and downloads with the card installed. There are two fans in the Huawei MateBook 13, one for the CPU and one for the GPU, and they're 8000 RPM. And that's faster than your typical fan, but they're not too loud either, so that's good news, and it does do a good job in terms of cooling this laptop. And you will notice the two speakers on the bottom, which get pretty loud and actually sound really good just not as good as those quad speakers on the MateBook X Pro. Let's hear the comparison. I remember the feel of the air touch my skin Am I real? Cause I felt something leave from within I feel empty, have I got nothing left to give? Am I living? Cause I only felt alive I 
touch my skin Am I real? Cause I felt something leave from within I feel empty Have I got nothing left to give? Am I living? Cause I only felt alive with them I'm driving in the night The hood down Now don't get me wrong, the Matebook 13 has some excellent speakers, they're just not as rich or as full or as loud as the Matebook X Pro which sports those quad speakers. But I just wanted to show you the difference between the two. But the Matebook 13 has some excellent speakers in its own right. Okay, let's talk keyboard. Now I really like the keyboard, although it does have shallow key travel at only one millimeters, it's still better than the 2018 MacBook Air with that butterfly keyboard. This is better. I thought the keys were nicely spaced out and I didn't feel like my fingers were gonna bottom out anytime soon. And I also love the fact this is a multi-stage backlit keyboard, which allows you to get work done in a dark environment or a dimly lit room. That's good. Now I'm also a big fan of the touchpad. It's very big and spacious and it also uses Windows Precision drivers and to me those are the best. Really responsive, excellent two finger scrolling, Windows 10 just as work as advertised. I'm a big fan. Now the touch screen is also very responsive as you can see here. The power button also doubles as your fingerprint scanner and it actually works really well as it did with the MateBook X Pro. Same here, very flawless, actually works really fast and actually when you boot up the system and you turn it on, hitting that power button it also registers your finger. So it's extremely fast and I like it, especially when you're using it with Windows Hello Login. It's really good. Now by now you're probably wondering, well how's the battery life? Well unfortunately not great, in fact it only did 6 hours and 25 minutes on my continuous web surfing test and that can be attributed to the fact that it has a smaller battery, 41.8 watt hours, than the MateBook X Pro which had a larger battery and hence you'll see the results. That's why the MateBook X Pro did so much better. But if you do need to plug in, it does support fast charging and you do get a full charge at around an hour and 45 minutes, which isn't too bad. Now they do give you a 65 watt power adapter in the box. So can I recommend the Huawei MateBook 13? And the answer is yes, I can recommend it if you're not gonna spend the extra money for the MateBook X Pro. Now, if you wanna get the 13, it's got a really sharp, vivid display, sleek design, great performance, comfortable keyboard, really good build, and it comes in at a pretty competitive price starting at $999. But of course, there are some compromises here. The first one being there is no Thunderbolt 3 port, and that's because they didn't want to cannibalize their MateBook X Pro sales, which does have Thunderbolt 3 support, and it has mediocre battery life. That's because they put a smaller battery in the MateBook 13 than they did in the MateBook X Pro. But I think this is a really solid offering from Huawei. If you want a 13-inch laptop, this may be the way to go. I'm going to give it a score of 91%, making the Huawei MateBook 13 worth your money. So what do you think about the MateBook 13? I love it. I think it's a great 13 inch laptop. Now here's the thing. If you're going to compare this to the MateBook X Pro, you need to understand the Pro line has certain features this won't have. Thunderbolt 3 support, quad speakers, but then again you're going to get better performance out of this Whiskey Lake processor than the 2018 version. Now of course at MWC 2019 today Huawei announced the all-new 2019 MateBook X Pro which now has the Whiskey Lake processor. But I know a lot of you are looking at the 2018 version because you can get it at a discount. For the same price you can get this MateBook 13. $12.99. In fact at Amazon right now you can get the MateBook X Pro for $1300 which to me is a steal. Now in its own right this is a really good laptop. Love its 2K display. Love the fact they were able to put the webcam on the display, not embedded in the keyboard like you get with the MateBook X Pro. This is better. Now you're also getting better performance out of that Whiskey Lake processor as I stated. Oh, this has a smaller battery. Of course, this has the MX150. This is the 25 watt variant. The one on the 2018 MateBook X Pro model is a 10 watt variant of that MX150. And actually, this is slightly better, not tremendously better, just slightly better than the 10 watt version. Starting price of $999 for the Core i5 model. $12.99 for the Core i7 model with the dedicated GPU. Again, I really like it. I think it's a solid 13-inch laptop when you compare it to the likes of the Dell XPS 13, the HP Spectre X360, and all those ultra portables in this category, this 13-inch category. This can certainly hold its own. Just wish it had a little bit better battery life, of course, and Thunderbolt 3 support. Again, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment 
in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.